The uh, history of contraception covers a number of very interesting uh, items. Uh, uh, one of those is actually a combination of using the cervix and the uterus, and it was called an intrauterine cervical device, different to an intrauterine device. This device had to be inserted by a doctor. It would be inserted through the cervix and protrude into the uterus. Whereas the intrauterine device of today is exclusively within the uterus. So the doctor would insert the device. It was to be left uh, in the uterus just prior to her menstrual period. Then she would return to the doctor. It would be removed, cleaned, and a week or so later reinserted. That's how it was supposed to have been utilized. A lot of women, unfortunately, for the convenience of not having to go regularly back to the doctor, simply left the device in place for not only months, but sometimes for years. The shapes of the device were tended to be the shape that I showed you here, which is the wishbone, and also a stem shape, something like a, a thimble just be inserted directly uh, through the cervix. And the material used tended to be 10 or 14 karat gold, which is what this is. However, unfortunately, a lot of poor material was also used, and you can see an example of what this is. And so over a period of time, being left in place with poor material, a number of women had infections take place and uh, so it didn't really take on in North America the way it did initially in Europe. So by the 1950s or 1960s the intracervical devices really weren't uh, that much in fashion anymore. However with time and research we have researchers now re-evaluating the intracervical device technique. And so this is now using new plastic materials, different shape, and it is in basic research, may or may not reach the marketplace, but research is ongoing in this field of intracervical devices.